Mega ETH recently deployed its public testnet and is calling itself the first and only real-time blockchain. It's already raised over 40 million with some big names backing it, including Vitalik Buterin. The project's been in the works since 2022, and the team says the goal is to bring Web2 level speed and responsiveness to Ethereum. So let's break down what that actually means and how they're trying to make it happen. At its core, Mega ETH is an Ethereum layer 2 that's trying to solve a specific problem, making blockchain interactions feel real time. The team claims Mega ETH is capable of handling up to 100,000 transactions per second with block times as low as 10 milliseconds. To get there, Mega ETH takes a different approach from most other L2s by focusing almost entirely on performance. And that choice shapes a lot of how the network is designed, including how robust it ends up being. The idea for Mega ETH started taking shape around 2022 after Long Lee, a computer scientist from Stanford, came across a blog post by Vitalik Buterin. In that 2021 post, Vitalik explored the idea that even a blockchain running at 10,000 transactions per second with centralized block production could still be acceptably trustless and censorship resistant under the right conditions. That concept stuck with Lee. He later teamed up with Lei Yang, a computer scientist from MIT, and before long, their idea evolved into what's now Mega ETH. Funding came in soon after. In 2024, the team raised 20 million in a seed round backed by Dragonfly Capital, Figment Capital, Robot Ventures, and several prominent figures in the Ethereum space, including Vitalik himself. You may have heard of Beam before. They started with a focus on gaming, but have expanded way beyond that. Now, Beam's building a full-on ecosystem for what you might call frontier tech. DeFi, decentralized compute, and next-gen dApps, they've got a sizable treasury to bring this vision to life, but they're not just tossing funding around. They're getting involved, helping teams build, making connections, and making sure the different pieces actually work together. And if you're holding the Beam token, you're not just along for the ride. You've got a say in what gets built, how resources are used, and where the network is headed next. So if you're into the idea of building the next wave with a community, not just observing from Twitter, check out their Medium page that we've linked in the description below. Later that year, they brought in another 10 million within three minutes through a public sale hosted on Echo, an angel investor platform that attracted over 3,000 users from multiple countries. Earlier this year, they launched a project called The Fluffle, a collection of 10,000 untradable NFTs tied to Mega ETH's token distribution. In the first phase, 5,000 NFTs were sold at one ETH each, raising around 13 million. According to Mega ETH, the idea behind the fluffle was to give users what they describe as meaningful skin in the game as an alternative to the points-based farming models commonly seen in other blockchain projects. The second half of the collection is expected to be sold in the coming months. And this brings us right into the tech that they've managed to build. One of the core ways Mega ETH is trying to boost performance is through something they call node specialization. Instead of asking every node in the network to handle everything, like running transactions, verifying them, and storing state, Mega ETH splits those responsibilities across different types of nodes. The idea, according to them, is that by letting each node focus on a specific task, the network can run more efficiently. There are four main types of nodes in Mega ETH. The sequencer, replica nodes, prover nodes and full nodes. When a transaction is submitted, it first goes to the sequencer. This is a high performance node that orders and executes transactions. You'll find sequencers in other L2s like Arbitrum, but many of those projects talk about decentralizing the role over time. Mega ETH doesn't plan to do that. It keeps the sequencer centralized by design and will only allow one to be active at any given time. According to the team, this helps 
reduce latency since there's no need for coordination or consensus between parties before a block is created. Mega ETH attempts to push this even further through something it calls mini blocks. Instead of waiting to batch large groups of transactions every few seconds, the sequencer creates these lightweight blocks about every 10 milliseconds. Each mini block captures the latest changes and gets broadcast to the network almost instantly. At the same time, traditional EVM blocks are still produced every second. Every transaction exists in both views the mini block view and the EVM block view. You can think of the EVM block as the long form version, carrying full metadata like gas usage, timestamps, and other information that block explorers and developer tools need. The mini block, on the other hand, is more like a quick snapshot, skipping the extra metadata and focusing purely on fast updates to the network. After a block is created, the sequencer sends out two different things to the rest of the network. First, it broadcasts a state diff, basically a summary of what changed to the next type of nodes called replica nodes. Instead of replaying every transaction, a replica node just looks at the changes and applies them. So for example, if someone swaps tokens, the state diff would just show the updated balances without rerunning the whole swap step by step. Second, the sequencer also sends the full block, the complete transaction history, to another part of the network, the prover nodes. These prover nodes take the full blocks and work on generating cryptographic proofs that confirm whether the block was processed correctly. Replica nodes then use these proofs to validate the state diffs they received from the sequencer. This setup, as the team describes it, lets replica nodes quickly stay in sync without having to re-execute all the transactions themselves while still checking that what they're applying matches the official block execution. Meanwhile, the fourth type of node, full nodes, also receive the full blocks. Unlike replica nodes, they do fully re-execute every transaction from scratch. Mega ETH describes them as essential for power users, especially bridge operators and market makers who need independent confirmation of the blockchain state to operate securely. And finally, there is the Eigen Data Availability Layer, aka Eigen DA. This is where Mega ETH stores the block data that other nodes rely on, unlike most L2s, which usually publish that data directly to Ethereum. The team argues that Ethereum space is limited and could quickly become a bottleneck at the scale they're aiming for. In Mega ETH's design, Ethereum is still used for final sediment, meaning proofs confirming the sequencer's honesty are posted there, while EigenDA handles storing the raw transaction and state data for the rest of the network to access. However, this system does come with its trade-offs. For one, because MegaETH relies on an external data availability layer instead of Ethereum's native data availability, it introduces a new layer of trust assumptions. Mega ETH nodes depend on Eigen DA nodes to store transaction data properly and to keep block data accessible at all times. If there's any downtime or failure in those nodes, it could impact the network's performance and data availability. The other major trade-off is centralization. Mega ETH uses a single centralized sequencer to order and execute transactions, and the team has said that they don't plan to decentralize it in the future. If the sequencer goes offline or acts maliciously, the entire chain could be affected. Looking ahead, the main item on Mega ETH's roadmap is the launch of its mainnet, which some sources report is expected to go live later this year. For now, the team is continuing to test and iterate through its public testnet, while also trying to speed up the development of real-time apps on Mega ETH through its accelerator program known as Mega Mafia. For the longer term, the team has said that they're aiming to bring block times down to as low as one millisecond compared to the 10 milliseconds reported today. Now these goals are part of the project's stated pursuit of supporting more responsive Web2 like experiences on chain. But what do you think? Will Mega ETH actually be able to pull it off? Well, let us know your thoughts in the comments below.